before even starting to analyze a charge on a polypeptide we have to know few points like what is pkr pkr is a tendency to lose a proton okay now uh, this this is the structure of glutamic acid right it has nh3 group cooh group and a gamma carboxylic group in its side chain now these three are the molecules which can donate or lose a proton but these two these two that is this carboxylic group and this amino group are involved in peptide bond formation so they cannot contribute any proton but this gamma carboxylic group in the side chain is a free and it can contribute it is not bonded to any Uh, nearby amino acid so it can contribute to a to donating a proton okay so when i say glutamic acid pkr is a 4.2 it means at ph 4.2 this gamma carboxylic groups donates or loses a proton because only at a particular ph of molecule shows the tendency to lose a proton not at every ph so when i see the pkr of this glutamic acid is 4.2 it it means at ph 4.2 it is starting to lose its proton and this histidine's pkr is 6.0 means at ph 6.0 at ph 6 it starts to lose a proton from its side chain by keeping this concept in mind we'll continue the rest of our learning now let us understand how to determine the charge on any given polypeptide now here is one question which says a peptide has a sequence this is the sequence of a peptide a uh, glutamic acid histidine tryptophan serine glycine leucine arginine proline and glycine this polypeptide consists of these many amino acids now what is the net charge of the molecule at ph3 at ph8 and at ph11 now we know that uh, in a polypeptide we need to remember only the pkr values of the acidic and the basic amino acid and the amino terminal and the carboxy terminal okay i'll explain in detail so, now this is the structure of any amino acid generalized structure right h this is the r group now this amino group and this carboxylic group are imparting this a charge to the amino acid this amino group imparts positive and when this loses a proton it imparts the negative charge but these two are and they involved in peptide bond formation right can take a look over here this is some tripeptide now this is the peptide bond the carboxylic group and the amino group the carboxylic group of first amino acid and the amino group of the next amino acid both are involved in peptide bond formation so when they are involved in bond formation they do not have this free atoms to impart any charge to the polypeptide but you can see over here this is the alpha amino group this amino group is not involved in any bond formation in fact it has this free it is the free end so it can impart the charge and the carboxylic group of the last amino acid even this can impart the charge but rest of them are involved in the peptide bond formation but when you take a look at the functional groups these are free free molecules right these are the molecules which are not involved in any bond formation in fact these are ionizable if they are acidic or else basic amino acid they can impart charge to the polypeptide now you understood right why the normal amino acids amino and carboxy terminal does not impart any charge although they can have a positive and negative charge if they are present as 
a monomer but if they are present in a polypeptide they are involved in peptide bond formation that's it but the r groups these are available right these are available to donate a proton or accept a proton right so if they are acidic or else basic only then if the r groups are acidic or basic then only they are ionizable now you can take a look at this this is the basic amino acid lysine arginine and histidine lysine apart from having this carboxy alpha carboxy sorry sorry just my mistake lysine apart from having this alpha amino group has one extra epsilon amino group which imparts a positive charge even arginine has the ionizable nh group has this ionizable nh group and even histidine has this ionizable nh group these are the amino acid which are basic and impart positive charge because of an extra amino group now this is aspartic acid and glutamic acid apart from containing this alpha carboxylic group they have an extra carboxylic group in their functional functional group they have an extra carboxylic atom in their functional group so these two impart negative charge because carboxylic acid when it ionizes it is getting converted into coo minus right so but whereas these nh3 plus these are nh3 plus so when they get ionized they become nh2 and they do not impart any charge so what do i mean by that now let's study the pkr pk I'm sorry let us study the pkrs of amino acids first we'll start with the acidic amino acid now this is the pkr at some value okay and they have a carboxylic group in their functional chain now before they attain their pkr value they are having an intact carboxylic group pkr means tendency to lose a proton right once they achieve their pkr value they donate a proton and become coo minus so before their pkr value they have zero charge on them we never write it as coo plus right we never write that so before the pkr they are zero charged and after the pkr they have minus one charge on them this is about the acidic now for the basic amino acid like arginine lysine and histidine they have an extra nh3 group so before their pkr value they have this intact amino group nh3 plus so they have plus one charge on them once they reach their pkr they donate their proton and become nh2 so we never write it as nh2 minus right that does not happen it is not such case so it is zero charge so basic amino acid prior to their pkr they have plus one charge and after their pkr they have zero charge because they have nh3 as their functional group but in case of acidic amino acid because they have an extra carboxylic group before their pkr they have this carboxylic group intact pkr means simple words tendency to donate a proton whenever a molecule is achieving a pkr it means it is now getting dissociated it is giving away its proton and becoming either negatively charged or in case if it is a basic amino acid then it becomes zero charge so this pkr prior its this acidic acid acidic amino acid prior its pkr it has positive charge sorry it has zero charge and after its pkr it has minus one charge so remember this acidic amino acid before their pkr they have zero charge after they reach their pkr they have minus one charge 
basic amino acid they have positive charge before their PKR and after their PKR they have zero charge. Now these are the PKR values we have to remember no matter what. Acidic amino acids, basic amino acid and a carboxyl group and a amino group. You can pause this video, this video and make a note of this PKR values. Now let us get back to our question. After analyzing these many basics, this was our question, right? Now I'll write the sequence over here. Now I have written the same amino acid, the same polypeptide, sorry, same polypeptide over here. Now first what we have to write? We have to write this alpha amino group and the last carboxylic group and next underline the charged amino acid glutamic acid histidine and arginine because those are only that we need to remember first we'll analyze at the positive charge at this ph3 so positively charged amino acid before their pkr valid they have positive charge and after their pkr valid they have zero charge and for negatively charged amino acid before their PKR they have zero charge and after their PKR they have minus one charge. Now this amino group has a PKR value of nine. So before that's PKR it's positive. Glutamic acid is also no glutamic acid has still since it is a negatively charged amino acid but it has not lost its proton. It is zero charged. Histidine has not lost its proton since it is positively charged amino acid, it is positive charge. Arginine also has not lost its proton, so it is positively charged. This carboxylic group at pH2 only it, it loses its proton, so it is negatively charged. So let us add up 1, 2, 3 plus 3 minus 1 is equal to plus 2. So the charge of the amino acid at pH3 is plus 2. Now let us analyze the charge, the charge of the polypeptide, not the amino acid, charge of the polypeptide. Now let us analyze the charge of this polypeptide, the same polypeptide at pH 8. First, first and foremost, let us write, write this alpha amino group and this carboxylic group over here. At pH 8, that is still positively charged and this is glutamic acid histidine and arginine we need to know this amino group is still positive glutamic acid has lost its proton being a negatively charged amino acid it is negatively charged now histidine has lost its proton but since it is positively charged amino it is amino acid it is zero charged arginine has is still having its proton so it is positively charged and carboxylic group has lost its proton at pH2 only it is negatively charged so there are one two two negative charge and one two two positive charge so the net charge of this polypeptide is zero now let us go to the same sequence of amino acid the polypeptide at pH 11 First, let us write this alpha amino group and the carboxylic group of the last amino acid. So, at pH 11, the amino group has lost its proton. So, it is zero charged. Now, here is the glutamic acid, histidine, and arginine that we need to worry about. Now, glutamic acid has lost its proton being a negatively charged amino acid it is negative in charge histidine being a positive charged amino acid having a pkr value of 6 it has lost its proton and it is zero charge arginine has a pkr of 12.5 approximately and it is still having a intact nh3 group so it is positively charged now this has lost its proton at the pH 2 only, right? So it is negatively charged. So there are 1, 2, 2 negative charge and 1 positive charge. 
so the charge on this amino acid is charge on this polypeptide at pH 11 is 1 minus 1 so that's it for now hope you understood the concepts thank you for watching and do comment like and share